What is going on everybody? This is Yes I Read That and today I am reviewing The Monster Baru Cormorant by Seth Dickens. The Monster Baru Cormorant is the second book in the Masquerade series and before I start my review, thanks for an advanced reader copy of this book. Thanks to Seth Dickinson. This advanced reader copy was provided by Tor via NetGalley, so really thanks a lot, it always means a lot, and um, I'm gonna get right into it. So the book starts right where the first one left off, with Baru Cormorant on an island with her new title and her new powers. If you are completely unfamiliar, you can watch my first video of the traitor Baru Cormorant, which is the first book in the series. So I'm going to get right into the review for this one. I'm gonna start with a small recap of the story then tell you my likes and dislikes about the book and my score and in the end I'm gonna talk a bit about spoilers but if you didn't read the book yet then make sure to turn off the video till then. So yeah, let's get right into the story. As I said, it starts on the same island that the last book ended. So Baru has her new role as a cryptarch, she has some new powers, she has a new name. So she will be the agonist or agonist, I'm actually not 100% sure, of the Falcrest Empire. Now, keep in mind that Baru is not in a good condition. She just lost the first lover she ever had, she had to betray everybody she knew, and she suffered a terrible wound on the right side of her body and her head. Her right side is completely blind, so she's a mess. Now, in this condition, she is introduced to some new characters. We already know Hesychest and Caradine Feather or Itinerus. But she also gets to know Apparitor, who is a Starkey prince. And also we get to know that Shate Yava, or however that name is pronounced, is one of the Cryptarchs as well, and she already knows her too. So she gets to know her new role, she gets to know some of the ideas the other Cryptarchs have on this island, but she also made some enemies, well, some, <laughs> in the last book. And she reaps the consequences now because a navy ship gone rogue comes for her. So a ship of the navy that has gone rogue chases her for sacrificing a bunch of navy ships in the first book, which she had to do at that point because she had to get some money to fund the uprising and her little rebellion. But well, now she definitely reaps the consequences. In this book we also get to know the Oriati people a lot more and we get to know more of the Oriati culture and the reason for that is that the Oriati are a people that the masquerade cannot conquer. Now Baru of course hadn't even thought of something like that so Baru is sent out to find the reason for this meanwhile being pursued by these masquerade navy ships and all around not being in a very good condition. So that's it about the story, I'm not going to spoil a lot more for you. I'm going to get right to my likes and dislikes. And I'll start with my likes. Alright, first things first, of course the story and Baru's character are explored a lot more. And I really enjoyed that, it was still as good as the first book. On top of that, there is a lot of world building in this book. Now I said that we explore the Oriati people more, but it's just in general there's a lot more world building also involving the other cultures and what is going on in the world right now. So yeah, a lot more world building which I always like. Then the culture of the Oriati people, I won't get too much into it, but we get to know it a lot more. We're introduced to this concept of trim that they have and I'm not gonna talk too much about it because it's kind of a mystery for a while in the book. But yeah, I, it's pretty interesting, I really enjoyed that. Now, the last book had a lot of feelings. This one, there is not as much, but of course Baru is grieving in this book. She just lost someone and it feels like she's doing not very well in dealing with it. And yeah, um, it's described very well, in my opinion. What I'm trying to say is she's a total mess, as she should be, um, you know, binge drinking, terrible decisions, just not in a good condition. And yeah, I think it was just, the description of that state was very, very good. Of course, the writing was still great. I just love the prose of Dickinson. It's, it's really good and the occasional joke he throws in there, I really enjoyed that. The last thing I really enjoyed was um, Baru's wound because in the end of the last book, I was kind of wondering what that is, her right side being wounded. And it's, 
it's pretty interesting. It's still kind of mysterious what actually happened, but yeah, it's I I don't think I ever read something like that before. It always makes me wonder like, oh, what's uh... <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm not sure. I'm still not sure what's going on. <laughs> but yeah, I like mystery. But yeah, let's get to my dislikes. There are a few things that I didn't really like. So I'm gonna just start with the first thing that I really, really, really didn't understand, and um, that was some of the weird gaming or IT explanations or references or whatever. Like uh, Seth Dickinson, he used hash functions to explain like how we perceive people, and it's just. Bro, why? What? Hash functions? <laughs> it was so weird. It it completely threw me out. Like, immersion destroyed. Um, and then there was this other point where uh, I think he described what a meta game is using a board game in the book, which was, I don't know, it's like, okay, what does it have to do with the story? I mean, I don't know, for me it's just, <laughs> when something doesn't fit in into the world of the book, then my personal immersion is destroyed. But, I don't know, other people might think of that different. Now, let's get to the real issues though, um, because that was just kind of a minor complaint, but it, it really tripped me up when I read that. So, the first thing is, the pace is a bit slower than the first one. So, we take a step back and... Uh, kind of um, deal with Barrow's personal issues, but I think that was kind of good because the first book was so dense uh, considering the writing and the information, so this one's a bit better, but still, it's still dense. Like in the last book, I feel like there could have been more with, you know, cultural descriptions and nature, because in the middle of the book there are not... I'm not gonna spoil it. I, I didn't say anything. So yeah, I, f I feel like with cultural descriptions and descriptions of nature, everything could have been a bit easier to digest. And also, I always like it when the author stirs my imagination. And yet the last thing, it's not really a dislike, it's more like a not-so-positive thing. <laughs> um, the character depth and, you know, the sadness that Tain Hu from the first book kind of started and if you were really into it, it just never happens again. You never get these feelings like you had in the first book, at least I didn't, um, which is kind of sad, but yeah. Um, it's not really negative because the focus of the book is a bit different, but yeah, I... The first book was just... I don't even know what to say because the first book is, was just so sad and you could really... it was so emotional and this one isn't really that emotional anymore. I don't really know how to say this, but for me the feelings and the emotions that the first book had just didn't reach the same level and maybe it was also because I couldn't connect with the char with the characters as much as I could with uh, Baru and Tain Hu in the first book. But well, yeah. But still, the book overall, I really enjoyed it. My score for the book is a 7 out of 10. I feel like it's a bit slower, I feel like it's a bit different, but it's still a very good book and the writing is still great. On top of that, there's a great focus on the world building and the story, which I always enjoy. So yeah, in my opinion, the book's great. The only thing is I think I would like it a lot more if there were more like descriptions and, you know, a bit more prose in between the dense informations. But well, it is how it is. Um, I still quite liked it. So one thing I should say is, if you enjoyed the first one, then I'm pretty sure you'll enjoy this one as well. It's uh, still the same political and, uh, you know, trade-focused book that the first one was. And I said in the first one, I really enjoyed that part. I didn't say it right now, but yeah, I'm, I'm a sucker for politics and for business. So yeah, it's it's still right up my alley too. <laughs> so... Um, if you read the first book and liked it, I would highly recommend this. It's a great continuation of the story. It takes a very different turn than I expected, but it's very good. So yeah, if you didn't read the book yet, make sure to turn the video off now, because I'm gonna talk about spoilers now, and um, I'm gonna start by talking a bit about the Oriati and their trim and their Cancrioth. So the first thing we know about the Cancrioth is that they're like a secret society or kind of like the rulers of the Oriati. Um, and then we 
don't get anything about them for a very long time in the book. But we do get to know that the Oriadi have this concept of trim and that it connects people and when you help someone else you improve the trim and I felt like the Cancrioth were actually a myth and that the Oriadi people just had this trim. But in the end of the book apparently I'm wrong and the Oriati actually do have some shadow rulers or it seems like they're really afraid of the Cancrioth. Anyways, what I'm trying to get at is the Cancrioth are seemingly immortal beings that implant their soul or their memories into some cancerous cells that grow on their body. I don't really know. It's kind of a cool idea. I'm, I'm really curious to see how it plays out. Alright, another thing I want to talk about is Baru and Aminata. In the end, when they see themselves and, you know, they just can't communicate it's just ah oh, damn it's so sad but yeah that's that's kind of the only place where I felt like oh no <laughs> let them see each other <laughs> otherwise I don't know it wasn't that emotional I feel like but yeah also the scene where Baru lost her fingers oh that was crazy and Tainshu I don't know what that character is gonna bring but wow she's crazy um so yeah I'm super curious what the next book is gonna bring um I really enjoyed this book. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this review. Um, if you did, make sure to leave a thumbs up. If you read the book, let me know what you thought about it in the comments below and I'll see you in the next video. Till then, bye.